We are going to demonstrate extraocular movements, which is a very important test to check for any extraocular motility problems. And um, if the patient comes in prognosis, that is another very important test which you need to do in these patients. So once you start off the test, the main thing, first thing you need to ask the patient is the consent. So we are going to do a test to check for your muscle alignment. If you give consent, there is uh, there's no, going to be no pain involved in this. You will be asked to look toward the darkness. So the next thing which you need to ask is, do you have any double vision? Because most of the students which I see, they don't ask if there is a double vision or not, and then they keep start doing the test. So, if, uh, so uh, you see, uh, I give you a fixating target. Do you see this as single? Do you see this as one target or two targets? One. one. So the first thing is one. When I move the target, you always have to tell me, whenever you see two, you need to tell me this is one or this is two. So I'll give him a target. Some people try to use a torch, which probably is can be done if the patient has got very poor vision, but if he has got good vision, it's better to use a target. And uh, we'll go ahead with this. So we'll use the tip of this. We'll keep looking at uh, this target, and then I'm going to move your eyes. You see one over here. Before going this, one other important step is to ask the patient to close one eye. Can you see? How many fingers do I have? Two fingers. Two fingers and the other side. And close the other eye. Thank you. And this, how many fingers? One finger. Thank you. Then you go so uncover your eyes. So this tells you that he's got good vision and you're able to fixate with both eyes. So uh, now you see one, tar uh, one target over here and ask them to horizontally move toward this side. Look toward this target over here. And these are pursuit movements, slow pursuit movements. So you need to see. If there's any sclera showing up on the side, if that is happening, that means that the extra ocular movement is not complete. Either it could be restrictive, which means that the other one muscle is not relaxing, or it could be a paralytic movement, means that the one muscle is probably not taking the movement away. So if it was a paralytic movement, you would look over here. And if I say this is the, uh, this is the maximum amount of uh, excursion he can do on abduction, that tells you that he's got about a minus two abduction. That could be paralysis of the uh, right lateral rectus or restriction of the medial rectus of the right side. So these are the horizontal pursuit movements. And uh, these are pursuit movements, but these are slow movements which are heavy. And, and now I'll ask him to look vertically, this is centered, but this is actually just a quick review of the vertical movements. The exact movements are going to be in, and this is the extra version, looking up and towards the right, and then going down. This is extra depression, and we come back in the center. This is levo elevation, and you need to see if both eyes are going up. Especially in this condition, you might have overaction of the inferior oblique muscles making the eye go down and look over this side and uh, this is the levo depression. So these are the cardinal positions and you would check the movements and then if somebody has uh, a, a squint or an obvious squint and the patient is not able to look all the way forward, you close the eye and you do it on a monocular eye and that actually will give you the full range of movement. Some Sometimes people will just do a movement over here and they say that this eye has got an exotropia and then as soon as this eye comes over here, this eye stops as well. And they say that the medial rectus is not working on that side. So actually, you need to close this eye and then do it individually on this side. The next thing is doing a saccade and that is a fast movement. So for that, you need two targets. One is I'm going to show you uh, this metallic pen over here and then my finger on this side. And then I'm going to ask you to look rapidly from one side, then stop, and then go to the other side. Look towards my pen over here, and go on the other side, and go towards the pen, and towards the finger, and towards the pen. And you need to see how fast it's moving. This will tell you if it's a paralytic movement. If it's a paralytic movement, it's go, one eye will go fast, while the other is going to go slowly, and that is going to be a slow motion movement. That differentiates between the two. And if it's a restrictive, one is going to go straight fast, the other eye is going to go and then stop with a jerk. That tells you it's a restrictive movement. So this is the two movements, the movements which you've done in a pursuit and then you've got your saccades. And the third, the last thing which you need to do is the near, the convergence which you need to check. If you look straight ahead, then you need to give them something which has got an accommodative target. Look straight ahead and keep looking over
over this, the numbers over here, and keep following the number. And with this, you keep looking and tell me when you see two and you see one or two and one. And then the other point is when it starts to get blurred. But tell me whenever, it, whenever if you get doubling or blurring of vision or this. Blur, so that means this is the near point of the uh, accommodation. So because the things are getting blurred. And now uh, if you see double, now if you see double, you can see the eye going outwards and that tells you that this is the near point of convergence. So these are the two things which you need to check with these patients. So this is briefly what the extraocular movements uh, are going to tell you. And sometimes uh, if there is a uh, gross exotropia, you can combine with it with a Hirschberg test before you start the movement or you can do a cover test quickly to check whatever deviation you have. Thank you.